Hello, nice of you to join us on Newsroom Series. I'm Dominic Iwiwu. Today we'll be taking a look at the North Central region. But before we get into that, let's take a look at nationals or top stories making around at the moment. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, has predicted thunderstorms and rainy weather across various parts of the country from September the 4th to 6th. Light to moderate rain is expected in parts of the North Central region, including the Federal Capital Territory. In a weather update released on September the 3rd, NIMET predicted morning thunderstorms in parts of Borno, Jigawa, Yobe, Adama, Taraba, Kano, Katsina, Zamfara, Kebi, and Sokoto states. The agency is also appealing to residents to avoid flood-prone areas, warning of potential urban flooding and strong winds in areas prone to thunderstorms. The Plateau State Government is determined to have a robust, sustainable and effective civil service with manageable workforce that will, develop, that will deliver competence in governance. Governor Caleb Muftuang emphasized government's commitments to reforming the civil service, which has been ineptitude and requires rejuvenating through restructure and engagement of competent hands in promotions and appointments of permanent secretaries. In continuation of the Plateau State Government's efforts to revitalize government machinery for increased productivity and efficiency in the civil service, some key appointments have been made to strengthen the workforce. The appointments are a result of the Reform Committee's recommendations after weeks of reviewing the structure and performance of the state civil service. Governor Caleb Muftuang formally receives a report from the committee on the next steps to take. An in-depth appraisal of the statutory composition and needs of the various entities were made, which revealed a dearth of qualified professionals in the service. The list of civil servants was compiled, and it was found that the workforce is about 17,404 as of July 1, 2024. And this is distributed across 95 MDAs. The committee, however, recommends a phased employment to fill obvious manpower gaps with employment of about 1,053 staff in the first instance. In demonstration of his commitment to the recommendations from the committee's report, Governor Muftuang announces the appointment of the head of service, permanent secretaries, and other aides who were sworn in at this event. I have had the privilege of going through the executive summary, and I can assure you that they have given us a clear roadmap on how to reform the civil service of Plateau State. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be quite challenging because it will involve money, it will involve taking some tough decisions, uh, but by the grace of God, we are up to the task. The new appointees provide assurance of an effective and diligent workforce under the new dispensation. These appointments are not only a great honor, but also a call to duty and a charge to serve the people of Plato State with integrity diligence, and dedication. We are fully aware of the weight of our responsibilities and we pledge to give our very best in ensuring that the civil service remains an efficient, effective, and responsive institution under your visionary leadership. Part of the recommendations of the Reform Committee include the restructuring and merging of some ministries and departments for better efficiency, which will lead to reduced cost of governance, as well as engagement of qualified professionals. As efforts to ensure food security and power generation, the government of Kogi State is reassuring residents that dams across the state will be effectively utilized for irrigation, farming and power generation. The Commissioner for Water Resources, Yahya Farouk, gave the assurance while inspecting the facilities of Umi Kankwe Dam as part of the state government's commitment to the World Bank-supported project and sustainable power irrigation in the country. He explains that the SPIN project is aimed at utilizing the dam for farming and Umi Kankwe Dam has satisfied the World Bank criteria. <laughs> 
officials from the World Bank, Nigeria Institute of Water Engineers, and the government of Kogi State are here to inspect the Omi Kampe Dam, which is located in Yagwa West local government area of Kogi State. This is part of efforts of the Kogi State government to ensure effective irrigation farming. The dam is a federal government operated project under the Lower Niger Basin Development Authority designed purposely for irrigation. The team is at Kampe for an assessment of the Kampe Omi irrigation project selected by the Kogi State government because of its dam water supply component. Governor Usman Ododo is represented by the Commissioner for Water Resources, who reassures the people of Kogi State that agriculture and food security remain a priority of his administration. The project aim at expanding the arable lands around the, the dam itself. That is why we are here. So the second component of the project is the power generation which is to a large extent, uh, what we see here, I think according to their selection criteria from the World Bank, it also satisfy that. Satisfied with the state of the dam, the team lead from the World Bank speaks on the project. This project has been existing for quite some time. Mainly, we, on this project, they have about 18 kilometers canals. Then uh, about 3.5 kilometers has been lined. Then the remaining kilometers, which is about 15 kilometers, are unlined. I think uh, is uh, basically on the budgetary provision that was made to the project from the parents of the resources and the budget. One of the farmers explains the challenges of water distribution experienced by farmers in the community. We have to ensure that there is proper distribution. Because that is the major challenges. And one of the key problems that most farmers are facing here today, if you have time, you go around, you know there has been dry spell. A lot of farmers in this place now are in distress, honestly speaking, because their crops got burnt as a result of that dry spell. This farmer also believes that more food could be cultivated if government can assist to channel the water properly. For what I'm planning for ahead, if there is enough water, at least for rice production, I can farm for three, four times per annum. With a target of minimum of 500 hectares of land to be cultivated, the state government is asking farmers cultivating two hectares of farmland to be prepared to cultivate four or five as a result of water that will be made available throughout the year. Still talking food security, the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Senator Abubakar Kiari, says that the Ministry of Livestock will guarantee not only food, but also nutrition security and grow the nation's gross domestic product. He stated this in Ilori, the Kwara State Capital, during the closing ceremony of a capacity building training for extension agents and farmers on livestock production. Livestock agriculture is about 5% of Nigeria's gross domestic product constituting only 17% of that on agriculture. To effectively explore its potential, resolve the social, economic and security problems prevalent in the livestock sector, and equally boost its overall productivity, President Bola Tunumbu has announced the establishment of the Ministry of Livestock Production. At this capacity building training for extension agents and farmers in Kwara State, the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiari, represented by his Special Assistant on Livestock Development, says President Tinumbu has a great vision for livestock production. Sooner than later, you're going to see the multitude of opportunities that is going to be open. The sector, like we said, is under lock. That is the way we look at it. By the time we open the lid and everybody see this opportunity, you will see the reason why you could actually emphasize the sector contributing more to our national GDP than the crop. One of the things we are aiming is that in the next few years, starting from this year, we'll start having more small ruminant production that will enhance more protein in the state. And also we are working on the synergy between crop farmers and and livestock farmers, it reduces clashes, reduces
conflict. You can have more food, the more protein. Livestock agriculture is a popular practice in Kwara State, and this training is laying emphasis on how to maximize utilization of crop residues for livestock production. In the next 25 years or thereabout, by 2050, Nigerian population will be about 300 million. Now, if you can imagine that 300 million, but the livestock population will also go up. Now, it means the land available for agriculture will reduce because you have to ask all of those people build more school roads, etc. So, agricultural land will reduce. And if something drastic is not done, or if we are going to um, avoid the calamity, we must intensify agriculture. This training is very beneficial to ruminants farmers especially it has opened our eyes to things that we know before but we don't know how to utilize it this project has come to teach us how we can integrate livestock farming and crop farming together that is to say we are we have little cost of production and we have a greater yield Livestock Productivity and Resilience Support Project, LPRESS, is a six-year, $500 million food security program supported by the World Bank and the Federal Government of Nigeria. Take two, and the Federal Government of Nigeria. The drive to sustain youth development, the National Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission has committed 1.8 billion naira to purchase starter packs for 5,000 youth who underwent training in various skills across the six states under its jurisdiction. Speaking at the Commission's headquarters in Mina during a staff training session for Youth Transformation Program, the Managing Director Abubakar Yewa announced the investment, highlighting the Commission's commitment to empowering beneficiaries with Free Corporate Affairs Commission CAC Business Name Registration in partnership with the Corporate Affairs Commission. Hyperdeck and Hyperdeck will facilitate business name registration for the beneficiaries paving the way for the distribution of starter packs. Now that the training period is over, we are working with the Corporate Affairs Commission so that these 5,000 youths can register their businesses names with names of their choice so that they become either sole, sole proprietors or partners as they based on their choice and the, es the essence of this is once they start their business they are now registered and licensed and recognized by law and this also gives them opportunity to explore the various financial options available in the Nigerian small and medium enterprises support schemes and that uh, it will also guide them to monitor the growth of their business. The YTP program is a program that is costing the Commission about 1.8 billion naira in the purchase of the starter packs. This is apart from the side attractions like this training and other training exercises we may need to conduct at the state level. You're watching Newsroom series on Channels Television. Still ahead, we'll bring you some more steps towards youth development. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, right now, we're going to move our attention to Plateau States to get an update on the attack on Boko's local governments. We're being joined by the Commissioner for Information, Musa Ashrams. Welcome. Nice to have you join us. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, first, would like you to give us an update on the security situation in Boko's local government area. Um, after the Dastard Act that happened, where we lost about um, eight people, seven from Dafo and one from Quatas, in Boko's local government area of Plateau State, peace and calm has returned. We are hoping that it will be sustained. We are praying that this um, nefarious activity doesn't happen again. Our people are known for their peaceful disposition. Our people are very, very accommodating and hospitable. But it's quite unfortunate that while they were relaxing in the evening, in the evening, assailants came and they opened fire 
and um, killed our people, and some sustained injuries of different degrees. They are receiving treatment as we speak. And um, the governor has charged um, security operatives to trail the assailants, the terrorists, and arrest them so that it will serve as a deterrent to other rascals. Um, Plato has, um, has been enjoying relative peace until these attacks. And uh, we're praying that um, we'll continue to enjoy a peaceful ambience and uh, have bumper harvest. You know that um, these are farming seasons and our uh, assailants sometimes when they attack this way, they take over our farming communities. Well, as a government, we've tried hard to see that our people return to their ancestral homes, especially those that were sacked um, over the years. And um, by doing so, We've um, cultivated about 6,000 hectares of lands so that our people can go back to their ancestral homes. Okay, but it's now, quite unfortunate that... Now, now uh, a, a couple of people are saying that um, this is a resurgence of terrorists in Bokos. Can this be substantiated? I mean, it's not far from it because this is um, a terrorist activity. We've not, we've, um, it has gone down a, to a large extent. We've not been having this kind of um, aggressive um, rascality, this kind of behavior. But lo and behold, when our people thought that um, peace has returned, these um, rascals came and they took away our lives. It's quite disheartening. <clears throat> it's quite appalling that we had to um, um, go through that dangerous path. We are no. praying that um, this will, will, be, will, be, will be a thing of the past. But um, you can see that not long ago, like two days ago, in the evening, the, the, the state became very, very terrified because our people are known for leaving and let, or letting others live too. It's okay. quite unfortunate. Okay, Commissioner. Now, uh, do you have a total number of people who were affected and uh, what's the update on those receiving treatment in the hospital? Okay, I told you that seven were killed in Quatas, I mean, therefore, and one in Quatas, and we have five receiving treatment in various hospitals. Okay, now, uh, Dafo community where this and similar other attacks have occurred is not far from the military base. Now, the pertinent question yes. is, how could the attackers have come into that environment unnoticed? It is the matter of intelligence. We have also charged the security agencies to doubly redouble their efforts because the Indafo there, you have a military establishment. But you know, these attackers are like guerrilla warfare, um, war mongers. They do not announce when they are going to come. So we want a situation whereby the security agencies will increase the level of their intelligence gathering so that we know if there are new persons in our community, if they are assailants, if there are people that have a history of um, carnage and all of those things. It's quite disheartening. You know, when bombs have um, been detonated in barrack military cantonments, people have been um, kidnapped from the Nigerian Defense Academy. It's just that when you suppress insurrections, all of these things will not happen. And when it happens in the event that it happens, people, when people are arrested and penalties are meted on them, it will serve as a deterrent to others. But you know, when people come and they kill and they get away with it, they will, they will regard and um, go back to another community or even the same community. So our prayer is that this kind of um, behavior, this kind of devilish behavior will come to an end and our people will face their agri agribusiness and other businesses so that we continue to feed Plateau State and the nation. It's quite disheartening. You know, sometimes the proximity to a, a military base or police station is not a, a yardstick for these people not to come and kill. They even have attacked police stations and military establishments. So, you know, when people are, are allowed to do whatever they do and get away with it, they will always be bold. They will be emboldened to continue with this nefarious act. So as a government and as a people, we are sad with this incident and we hope that it doesn't occur again. And we are calling on security agencies to go after these killers and arrest them and give them the right punishments okay. so that others that, um, that feel this is a, um, a, a, an appetizing business will desist from it. Basically, okay, we are, we're you. not happy with what is happening. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We were joined by the Commissioner for Information from Plateau State, Musa Ashrams. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for having me. God bless Plateau State. Staying with security matters, in a bold move to address the crippling effects of insecurity in Niger East Senatorial District, Senator Mohamed Sani has constituted a committee to conduct a comprehensive needs assessment to identify projects and interventions that will foster economic development in the region. The Niger East Senatorial District has been plagued by the activities of armed bandits and terrorists, particularly in Shiroro, Munya, and Rafi local government areas, resulting in loss of lives, displacement of communities, and destruction of infrastructure. At the inauguration ceremony, Chairman of the Niger East Senatorial Advisory Council, Baba Suli Bisala, raised concerns about the devastating impact of insecurity on the zone, promising that the committee will assess the needs of the people and identify projects that will make a real difference in their lives. These are challenges that you find everywhere, uh, most especially here in the north. Uh, projects are done, and economic viability, uh, also you find they're not there. Uh, so what usually happens is there's a lot of forces now that is camping down on the uh, on the insurgents and all that. So if 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 that happens, people go back to their bases and do certain things. We are sure they will be committed in their jobs and uh, they will perform very well. Uh, over in Benue State, leader of the G14 political bloc consisting of the 14 T-speaking local government areas in the state have endorsed Mr. Tahid Utan as the preferred replacement for the People's Democratic Party chairmanship position following the sack of Mr. Iyochai Ayu, who hails from the same zone. Mr. Laha Dva disclosed this while addressing journalists after the presentation of Mr. Tahid Utan to the group by his campaign team noting that the position is best filled by a young leader who can walk the talk of rebuilding the party. The national chairmanship aspirant says his roadmap to rebuild and reposition the PDP is a viable alternative for, Nigeria's, for Nigerians to look up to as a rescue mission from the present economic realities. My desire to be national chairman is to unify our party so that we can begin to compete again within contemporary Nigeria. We are a party that is run by the constitution. So it is only proper that we bring the, the articles and the words of our constitution to bear on the leadership of the party by insisting on a smooth and seamless transition after the removal of Dr. Yuchi Ayu by a court of competent jurisdiction in Nigeria. Our party is greatly challenged. It's greatly challenged. As an opposition party, it takes a lot to rebuild the party. Our party is fragmented from the national downward. And we have extracted from him, we have actually extracted from him his view on how to tackle that problem. And we are, con we are convinced that he has the capacity to do it. Shift our focus to Nasarawa State, where 1,200 vulnerable residents have received palliatives from the federal government to serve as soccer in view of the economic hardship in the country. The Minister of State for Police Affairs, Mrs. Imam Suleiman Ibrahim, led the distribution of bags of rice and fertilizer across the three senatorial zones of the state. Speaking during the exercise, the minister says the gesture is part of the renewed hope agenda on food security of President Bola Tinubu's administration. A correspondent, Halima Gayam, has this report. <laughs> Vulnerable residents of Nasarawa State from the three senatorial zones of the state line up to receive palliative from the federal government. The Minister of State for Police Affairs is the brain behind the distribution, which is holding at the palaces of the traditional rulers of Kwandari, Nasarawa Egon, and Karu. <laughs> Two trucks of 25 kg bags of rice and MPK fertilizers are to be shared to 1,200 selected residents, which the minister says is part of the Renewed Hope agenda on food security. The president has sent me to you to tell you that he appreciates you for your patience, that more is coming, that you should continue to be patient, that we have already set the tone for prosperity, for our collective prosperity and our national security. 
and that you should take this rice and the fertilizer and go back to the farm. And they've already set the tides for a new dawn, a new era, the renewed hope agenda. Beneficiaries share how the palliative impact their lives. It will help me a lot. How? Because I have farm. Now I'm due to the economic situation now. Uh, my farm uh, uh, is almost dying, lack of fertilizer. Now that I have fertilizer, I can put it on my farm. It will grow very well and it will help me and the family. So I'm really happy. I appreciate what she did. I want to say it's a nice one and it came back to right time because uh, particularly my school, we are writing exams now. I know the hardship and how students are facing. In fact, there are hunger in the campuses. Me personally, we know what we are facing too. So I should believe that this rise that some of the students will be getting is going to be a good beneficiary to them. And just like we encourage them, not only them, they are going to share with their friends. Beneficiaries comprise persons living with disabilities, internally displaced persons, farmer groups, student groups, and nursing mothers. Halima Agayem, Channel Television News. And that's where we drop the anchor in today's edition of Newsroom Series. I'm Dominic Iwiwu. Stay safe.